Welcome to Green Time. I'm host Don Fitz. This episode, we're going to be talking about passive house, the idea. What in the world is a passive house? First of all, let's take a look at some of the footage from the movie Passive House, A Building Revolution. This is the story of a new way to build that uses 80 to 90 percent less heating and cooling energy. It's called Passive House because the buildings are so well insulated and airtight that they don't require an active heating system, like a forced air furnace or a heat pump. This house is going to cost $100 a year to heat and cool. So I think that's a pretty powerful statement. This technology was invented in North America during the first energy crisis by innovative people who were trying to make significant cuts in energy use. A famous physicist named William Shoglev, very early seen that the hugest potential is just in using the energy we have much more efficient. Today, our problems are much more serious than they were in the 70s and 80s. Climate scientists tell us that we must cut our CO2 emissions 80% by 2050 to help stabilize the planet's climate. And that means drastically cutting our energy use. There is a, a deep analysis of the International Energy Agency about the current situation. And they just state that the current energy situation in the world is blatantly unsustainable. We absolutely need to transform the way we use energy. What happens when you pass that peak and you change the relationship of supply and demand and you're on the downhill slope? The fact that we are going to the limits of fracking to get shale oil out of North Dakota and Texas, that we're performing mining operations in Canada to dig out oil sands and process them with natural gas inputs to make a liquid fuel. These are signs that we are really hitting scarcity. The CO2 emissions that we're personally responsible for don't just go away, that they're actually accumulating. The notion that I was just through casual energy use producing CO2 that will be still be there in 25 years and 50 years that my grandkids will be dealing with the stuff that I just casually put out there. We will need to know how by the middle of the century to reduce carbon emissions by 80 or 90 percent. We're able to tell now, I think 2010 was the warmest year on record. If the worst case occurs, then large parts of the planet may be uninhabitable, we may have flooding on the coast. It's going to require a, an effort that's certainly equivalent to what we would call a wartime effort, and it's going to require the citizenry to accept that this is very important and really see this as a survival question. And we have to change it quite quickly in, in energy relation quite quickly. That means in the next uh, 20 to 30 years. 20 to 30 years is a short time compared with the development of buildings, compared with the development of power plants. International Energy Agency speaks about an energy revolution, what is needed. 
Welcome back to Green Time. I'm host Don Fitz. Uh, we just saw portions of the movie Passive House of Building Revolution, which introduces the topic of Passive House, the idea. With me, I have a couple of guys who have thought a lot about this and built the first Passive House in the state of Missouri. I have Ralph Wafer. Ralph, tell us your company. Well, I'm, my, my company is Ralph Eglin Wafer, AIA Architecture and Planning. Fantastic. And Gary Steps, what, what company are you with? I am Gary Steps, uh, founder and president of Butterfly Energy Works. Okay, great. Now, now tell me, people have just seen a few minutes of the introduction of this movie. Could, is there anything that you thought that was particularly good or off about the movie? Well, the problem with Passive House is you're bringing in a, a fairly unique <clears throat> subject to today's Americans. So the movie did a relatively good job of trying to get through there, but it took a while. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it does. We're only going to see a short portion of this show, but if people want to get the movie, they will have ordering information about how, how they can get the whole movie. Now, wh where did this whole idea of a passive house come from? Well, there was this thing called an oil embargo back in the early 70s here in the U.S., and as you probably remember, gasoline went from 25 cents to a buck and a quarter, and we thought the world had come to an end. And a lot of really bright people started building extremely well-insulated, tight buildings facing south called mm -hmm. passive solar buildings. Mm -hmm. And when the embargo was over, we went back to building Stickhouse. But Europe, because they've always mm -hmm. had huge utility bills, picked up on it. Okay, and so basically, it started off in the idea started off in the United States, went to Europe, and, and now, now it's decades <laughs> too late, <laughs> it's a ten decades late, it's coming back to the United States. Um, Ralph, could you tell us anything about the, the passive house, that uh, the, the first one which is built in the state of Missouri, which is in Dogtown? Right. Well, the, the, the clients, the owners came to me and said, we want a very energy efficient house. And I said, well, we can do that, but you know, we really ought to make one that we can uh, do, do objectively and we really can measure what goes in and what it will do. And to do that, we, we, we should design a passive house. And they were somewhat familiar with the concept and I, they, they grasped it very quickly. And I got Gary involved and we began the process of designing a house that met passive building standards. And what's unique, what's unique about that is that these are design standards that you must meet to, it, to get certified. And so that's what passive house standards mean. You meet the standards meet and it's the standards. then you're certified as a, certified as exactly. a passive house. Exactly. And the standards we can go into, but they, it's, it really has to do with energy consumption and uh, tightness of the house. And it's unlike other energy efficient programs, which you can pick uh, item A, item B, item C, item D out of a program and get a, a, an award for being this kind of house or that kind of house, but it's not measurable. A very, it's certainly not, it's not so, not like a passive house. So it really, passive house is really the ultimate in a objective measurable uh, house or building. And, and, and so is the goal to use like about 10% less energy or about 12% less energy than a conventionally constructed house? A lot less than, a lot, we, 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 wanna, we want it to be 10% of, not 10% less, but 10% of. It, okay. it's, it's, if, you, if you compare the two, the passive house would be approximately, and I'll let Gary get into this because he really knows it better than I do, but 10% 10, 10 of the energy that might be consumed by a conventional building would be that consumed by the passive house. Okay, now, now what do the mandated standards mean? Uh, there's energy feature, uh, you mentioned to me that I should say, you know, what are the, um, how, how is energy features of the home which are not mandated by the standards but which are made easier by the standards? Now, now that was sort of confusing to me, but what, what does that mean? Okay, yeah, just the, the fact that you already have a building that's extremely tight and extremely well insulated. Mm -hmm. So the use of high-tech appliances and specifically in our case lighting, all the main lighting in this house is LED. Mm -hmm. And in a normal house, that little ex that ex extra expense wouldn't give you very much. Mm -hmm. But in this case, we're we're down to tiny amounts of energy being consumed, and going all LED was a natural. 
So the LED light is actually much, much more efficient than yeah. the traditional incandescent, and it's more f efficient even than the fluorescent bulb. Much more efficient. Okay, so, and, and is, is, it, is it one of those examples of something where you pay more money up front? You, it costs you more for the light bulb, but in the long run, you're gonna, it may take a few years, but you're gonna save money. You're gonna save huge amounts of money and get a much better quality light. Now, now what about the, the passive house itself? Is that gonna cost more or less than, than I, th I think I've read that it costs about 10 to 15 percent more than a conventional house of the same uh, interior uh, space. Is that, do you think that's accurate? That's probably accurate for the first of, uh -huh. but it's a learning experience. Mm -hmm. And the, what we've seen in both Europe and the United States is that the first one a team does is out there towards the high end of that. Okay. And then the next one is significantly less and significantly less because you learn things along the way. Okay. So, so the thing is, if you had a, we're going to have a three hundred thousand dollar house built, you might expect to pay like three hundred forty or three hundred fifty thousand dollars for a passive house at this state of the game in, in, in the state of Missouri. Potentially. Yeah. If, if all other things were equal, there's right. so many choices you make in in constructing a house. But if you really had house A and house B, and they were identical in every respect but house A was a passive house, then you're probably right. Because okay. th there's, for one thing, a, a contractor who knows he's gonna build a passive house, all of a sudden knows mm. he's gotta pay a lot of attention to things that on a conventional house, he may not pay so much attention to. Uh, then the systems and the components mm. you use that are integral to achieving a passive house mm. standard mm. probably do cost more. You're not gonna get the windows at Home Depot. But, but, you're, but you're, if you stay in that house for 30 years, then it's going to start to... Oh, by, absolutely. Five years. And, and of course, this, this is based upon the assumption that energy prices stay the same. But, as, but as, and the calculations are based on what does it cost to heat a, heat a house today? But in 2020 or 2030, we hope that house is still standing. Right. <laughs> and it's, so the energy costs are going to be enormously more. Right, and especially in Europe where Passive House showed up, Mm. It's now becoming the, the standard for the European Union and, and, because their utility bills are and, way higher than ours. And so we would guess in terms of the resale value, as more and more passive houses are built, people are going to realize that this is going to save me a lot of money. So the value of the house, I would guess, would go up tremendously in terms of retail. Okay, well, we're going to take a short break. We're going to see a few more minutes of the movie, Passive House of Building Revolution, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Our housing designs in the U.S. rely on power, electricity, and the burning of fossil fuels. If we did not have easy, uninterrupted access to these fossil fuels, I think a lot of our housing would not serve its main purpose, which is to shelter people. Almost 50 percent of our CO2 in the United States is generated from buildings, either from building them, tearing them down, or living in them. Buildings generate more CO2 than cars, trucks, and airplanes, and once constructed, last many more decades. The longer it takes us to realize that we have no alternative to making huge improvements in how we build, the less time we will have to do a good job in that transition. Forget about points, forget about green ratings. How much energy did the building use last year? Let's look at the utility bills. As soon as last year's energy bills for building become a normal part of a real estate broker's listing, people will have a tremendous financial incentive to make their buildings energy efficient. It was a very early development of energy efficient architecture in the 70s. In America there was a, a lot of good examples showing that you can have a better efficiency of say a factor three, a factor four, and that there is almost no limits on how high the efficiency can be. First super insulation projects came out of Champaign-Urbana, out of the Small Homes Council. Wayne Schick apparently coined the term super insulation. These developments ended somewhere in the range of the mid of the 80s. It was very difficult to understand that, why these developments stopped. And that's when, in Germany, 
Dr. Feist and uh, Professor Bo Adamson, they went ahead and they studied all these concepts. They had studied William Shercliffe. They had studied all the early superinsulation books. They had studied uh, Amory Levins's work. They took the whole thing and just really engineered it from top to bottom. We really prove that this strategy is successful. In 2007, Katrin Klingenberg built the first prototype passive house in the U.S. in Urbana, Illinois. Kat and builder Mike Karnagis then began the Passive House Institute U.S. Europe has been setting an incredible example in terms of making subsidies available, understanding that also this new building sector is creating jobs, putting new codes in place that require building construction to comply with Passive House standards. And the European Parliament has put into place an action plan that um, is working towards making Passive House Standard code for the entire European Union by 2015. Europeans and people living in other developed countries generate less than half the CO2 each year as people in North America. Traditionally, Europeans live in smaller houses, but there is also a growing commitment to renewable energy and the passive house as the building standard. What is not so well known is that you can reduce it not just by 10% or 20%, but you can reduce it by 80% and 90%. So this is a real solution available. This building standard is achieved by making the entire building envelope, the walls, floor, and ceiling, thicker than usual, so it can hold more insulation. So we're using eye joists that are 16 inches deep. So in the 16 inches, we can put in three layers of this high-density fiberglass. Holes where wires, plumbing, and vent pipes enter the building are sealed, and the house is made as airtight as possible. Heat or energy recovery ventilators are used to provide fresh air, transferring heat from the exhaust air to the fresh air entering the building. We have the air coming in that's cold uh, from outside, and then we have the warm air on this side coming from the house and extracted from the kitchen. The constant ventilation ensures good indoor air quality. High performance doors and windows are also installed. Such windows are typically triple paned and filled with argon or krypton gas. This is a Passive House certified window. The thermal break in between is really the key to stopping the energy transfer from the exterior to the interior or vice versa. Um, All material conducts energy, some more slowly than others. For example, metal and brick conduct energy more easily than wood, which is a better conductor than insulation. Thus, a metal window frame or a solid framing member in a wall becomes a thermal conductor of heat or cold between the inside of the building and the outside. In a normal building, this would usually be a thermal bridge where you have a transfer of masonry through the building uh, into another masonry wall. This is a, a stone, is a skin. There's lots and lots of insulation back there. So we've reached this traditional look with extremely modern energy efficiency. And if you calculate the heat loss, it's the misconception that the public has that there's going to be one thing that changes the way that we do it each area is going to have a small savings, and add it all together, it's going to be a very large savings. Welcome back to Green Time. I'm host Don Fitz. We just saw a second portion of a Passive House, a Building Revolution, and with me I have a couple of folks who are very familiar with Passive House construction. I have Gary Steps. Is it Butterfly Works? Butterfly Energy Works. Butterfly Energy Works. And I also have Ralph Wafer, who's with Ralph Elgin Wafer, uh, architecture. architecture. Okay, right. fantastic. Right. Now, what, one of the things uh, about Passive House is that don't they have to be airtight? Extremely tight. Okay, extremely tight. Now, what does that mean? Like, do you then get a lot of radon gas? I mean, I used to say that I'll never get radon gas in my house because I can just feel the air blowing through the house. <laughs> does, this, does, does this mean that you have a radon gas problem with it uh, bubbling up from underground if you have a Passive House? No, actually, w the way everybody's continued to think of it, and you're one of those, you have to completely invert that concept. Mm -hmm. You want the building to be as tight as possible because otherwise, when the wind blows through, it not only brings in dust, mold, 
insects, etc., but will also bring in moisture, mm -hmm. and moisture is deadly to buildings. Mm -hmm. What you do is you control it with mechanical ventilation, and thereby keep all the bad things out and all the good things in. Okay, so some of that mold growing on my walls might not be there if I had a passive house. That's correct. Mm -hmm. and, and especially your point about radon, <clears throat> the, the building in Dogtown mm -hmm. has eight inches of closed cell foam insulation under the slab. So it's, it's airtight under the slab, not just around the slab. Okay, what, what does this mean about the, the living experience in the home? Are, are, are people gonna be more miserable because they have these thick walls and they, they, don't, they don't have as much space to move around in from, from what is it, eight or 10 inch thick insulation? Well, you, you design the building. I mean, you're, you're, the, the walls are as thick as they need to be to achieve the objective criteria of a passive house. So it could, in, in the case in Dogtown, they're uh, 14 inch thick walls but in another building it could be eight inch thick or six what, inch thick. What are walls usually? In a, in a well, in, in our case, they're insulated concrete forms, uh -huh. which is a, a rigid insulation creating a form into which concrete is poured. Uh -huh. And the, the concrete is a structural wall. There's insulation on the inside, there's insulation on the outside uh -huh. that forms the insulation. And then on drywall is applied to the interior face of the insulation, and in this case, a stucco material is applied to the outside. But the, the floor space is whatever you want to make it. You know, you could have a 10 foot wide room or a 14 foot wide room or an eight okay. foot wide. It really so is, you, you design it for the needs of the people who are going to occupy it. And it, there are, you know, you can get a big house and it could be a passive, be certified as passive house. It could be a, a small house, could be the same. Uh -huh. It really is, there's no dictate that it's got to be this or be that. And more importantly, mm -hmm. The, every square inch of that house is absolutely usable. Okay. We do audits on homes all the time and we walk in and we see furniture is pulled away from the, the wall because mm -hmm. the walls are cold in the winter and hot in the summer. Mm -hmm. You have to worry about moisture, mold, condensation behind mm -hmm. drapes and furniture. In a passive house, every surface is basically room temperature. Oh, I hadn't even thought about that. That's a really good point. So I don't, in, in other words, if my couch is up against the living room wall. That's trouble. It, it, in my house now, it could mold. Yep. But if I pull, the, but in a passive house, I would not have to worry about that. And so when people put their, their couch two feet out from the wall so the wall doesn't mold, they're basically losing a lot of space. Absolutely. Okay. Um, what about the exterior? Okay, we talked about the interior of the house. What about the uh, exterior? Does it have to have some sort of weird appearance so that it sticks out like a sore thumb in the neighborhood to have a passive house? No, it doesn't. I think our house, our house may stick out in the neighborhood in which it's located, but that's because it's, designed, it's a contemporary home mm -hmm. in a setting of more traditional homes. Uh, we used a stucco material as our exterior finish. Most of the houses around it are brick. So in a sense, it's different, but uh, it, 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 could be, it could have been anything. We could have used brick, we could have used wood, we could have designed a traditional appearing home. But in this particular project, the owners and I and Gary and, and the contractor agreed on you know, the shape the, the house was taking, the space we were creating. We wanted to get sunlight in to every possible room and it's hard to do if you have a, a traditional shaped house. Mm -hmm. It just, so with the contemporary house with some shed roofs and flat roofs, we're able to do things getting sunlight in. Okay, and that's, fantastic. that was how that worked. Okay, now uh, why would it be important, is there anything in addition to what we've covered before that it would be important to homeowners or business or owners to have passive house, I guess passive business building construction? Well, it would uh, it reduce energy consumption dramatically. It would increase the comfort of the individuals within the building. Um, there's lots of pluses that, that passive buildings create for the user, for the you know the, the city in which it, it, it takes place, uh, the long term future of of the of this of civilization because all of a sudden. Energy consumption drops well, dramatically. Well, let, let me, uh, we just got a few seconds left. left. Let me uh, ask you a, a heavy question. Is there any reason that you, that the whole country shouldn't have a law that you have to build every new house to passive house standards? 
Can we vote for you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically this is really a building revolution and it really would make a tremendous difference. Right, and as I've noted before, you're- I gotta cut you off because I'm getting the sign to wrap right. up. Gary Steps, Ralph Waker, Wafer, I wanna thank you for coming. I wanna thank everybody for tuning in. Please tune again same time next week.